as always when you jack up any car get a good jack and make sure you jack it from the right points underneath the car there's always a reinforced part where you can jack it up from so here's an example you see these two notches there you were meant to jack it in between those two notches right there there's four spots for front and rear so make sure you jack it from that point and you can also buy jack pads to fit in that groove as well just make sure you jack it from these reinforced points and whenever jacking a car from the front or the back always always use wheel chocks to make sure that the car does not move use it for both sides just in case the car tries to roll back this is especially important if you're jacking up from the rear and you don't want your car to roll forward make sure you do put jack stands on the front if you're jacking it from the rear diff so before getting started you need to remove a cover right you've got two 10 mil screws here and then there's one on the back right here what you need to do is remove them you can see they're in the tray right there three screws you can even use a phillips head screwdriver to remove it or just use a 10 mil socket and ratchet this is a tool that i bought in order to help grip the oil filter housing and then you can remove it so all I've done is it works like a vice grip and all I've done here is I have clamped it on and then all I do now is go counterclockwise and there we go. You can see it's loose now, as you can see. Now I'm gonna set my oil pan right underneath here and we're gonna catch all that oil. Make sure you go ahead and remove your oil filler cap. This will allow the oil to flow a lot better. And if your car isn't already warm from driving, then start it for about five, 10 minutes and then warm up the oil so it flows a lot easier. Warm oil is a lot easier thinner and it will flow a lot better so now we can just loosen that oil cap all right so here we go i'm just going to crack it loose i'll remove the vice grip i'll undo it go it's loose enough now that i can do it by hand so i'm just going to reach underneath undo it loosen up all the way and here comes the oil i'll just let this go all right just pull my sleeve back and we'll let it out there we go We'll let that go for a bit. For the oil drain, we now grab our new oil filter. It also comes with a new O-ring. We've already removed the old one. Now we just push in our new one, just like that. And then we replace this O-ring right here. Now remember where the groove is, because that's where it's going to go. It's going to use a flathead screwdriver to get it off. Grab our new one and sit it straight back in the exact same spot. So you notice the groove where it sits in? This one right here. Okay. There we go. That's where it needs to sit. Now, the most important part about doing an oil change and changing these O-rings is to ensure you lube this O-ring well. Okay, the last thing you wanna do is screw this on with a dry O-ring. That's not gonna be pretty. Most likely you're going to strip it or you'll damage it and then it won't seal. This is why this oil cap seals. We're gonna crack open our new oil. I'm gonna dip my finger straight in and then I'm going to lube this O-ring nicely. All the way around. New or old, doesn't matter. Okay, just put that on there perfect and that's it now let's reinstall this and then we can fill our oil back up we've got the new line here 5w30 full synthetic that's what you want as you can see here really good oil and i got it when it was on sale so it was only like 35 dollars a bottle five liters i've gone ahead and used another jack and just jacked it up so i have a lot of room now i can remove this completely We'll also get some brake parts cleaner or degreaser. What we're going to do is clean underneath the car where any oil has spilled. As you can see, there's some oil spilled from the splash. So I decided to run the engine for a split second. Not long enough to damage anything, just for a split second so it pumped all the oil out. Then get some brake parts cleaner here, spray the bottom, get all this stuff off. And then give it a good wipe. Okay, now we're good. I'm gonna reinstall the oil filter cap. Make sure you, when you're putting it in that you don't cross thread this, okay? It should go in nice and easy until the very end. See how I'm using my hand? And it's just going in nice and easy. That's what you want. It's getting tight now. And now I'll grab my tool and I'll just tighten it that little bit more. Make sure I grab onto the two notches here, one on each side. Okay, let's get in the groove, clamp it and tighten it. And that's it. There we go. Perfect. That is nicely tight. That's all we need. Now, I'm going to give it a quick test run, fill up the oil and then check that there's no leaks because that's very important. So I'm going to put in five liters first and then we'll check the oil dipstick and see where it sits. I love this little gadget that I got. It just helps to 
tipping oil so much easier, no spillage. It's a great little tool. All right, so I'm just gonna leave this to uh, drain completely. And while it's doing that, I'll just get my next one ready and I'll also check how much oil there is right now. Let's grab a new cloth, we'll pull out our dipstick just here, wipe it down first, and I will check how much oil there is. We'll also put the uh, car back on level ground. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is remove all this. Put the cap back on, we'll let the car go back down. Okay, so now we're gonna run the car for a little bit, make sure the oil moves around, and then we'll check the oil once again. All right, so I'm just letting the uh, oil run around. As you can see, it changed noise already, so the oil's kind of moving around in the engine now. And I'll just switch it back off, let it sit for a minute, and then we'll check the oil level once again. So according to Nulon, the Lexus IS350 V6 takes 6.1 liters. So we've already put in five liters. Now this also depends on whether you got every last drop out of the engine. If you didn't, make sure you check it after and just see how much the dipstick reads and then go according to your dipstick. And right now we're gonna recheck the dipstick. Hopefully it's at the right level now. Just wipe it clean, put it back in, pull it back out and look at that. Almost there, you see where the oil just finishes? Just shy of full. So we need to put in a little bit more and we'll be good. So I'm gonna put in one more liter exactly and that should do it. And you even see on the cap here, it also shows 5W30, which is the viscosity of oil that you should use. All right, so we're gonna put in one more liter. So we're gonna stop this at four liters, because it's a five liter. Just put it on the ground level, still above four. Okay, so it's almost on four. We just put a little bit more in and that's it. When you look at the oil bottle, you can see it's basically sitting on four, so that should do it. We'll check the Oil dipstick once again, and it should be just right. Put the lid back on your oil so you don't spill it. Put the oil filler cap back on, and check the oil level one last time. And look at that, perfect. It is just sitting on full. That's exactly where we want it. All you have to really do now is replace the bottom cover, and you are done. So this is the last thing we have to do. Grab yourself a 10 mil again, socket, or I'll just use this tool and reinstall it. You can see where the screws go. Let's get underneath the car and put it back on. Okay, so there, there's one, two, and three. This simply sits on just like that. But before I do that, I'm gonna run the car for five minutes, make sure there's no oil leaks, and then we can simply put it back on. that there are no oil leaks at all so we're good to replace this cover and we will be done okay let's uh, put this back in and last one just here that's it fasten it up and we are done guys that's it and that is how you successfully change the oil and the oil filter of the Lexus 2011 IS350.